Hi friends, I'm coming to you live again from the carriage house where it feels like there's perhaps particular vulnerability when we don't have all of our elements pre-recorded. We know that there's a tenderness that comes when we know things are unfolding right as we speak. And so I welcome the moments to be with you and to share with you in this holy space wanting to let you know that there is a bird that found its way into the barn. And so as I came in this morning, I heard these very live cheeps and looked up to our skylight where there was fresh evidence that it had been flying. And now in an effort to save its future, it is squirreled into the kitchen where I understand that Don and Rich have a plan for its liberation. But I feel I cannot express my words this morning without talking about that captivity of that creature. For as desirous as I am for the liberating love of God, especially in this moment when we have been so locked in, I can't be fully at peace in my heart knowing that there is a little winged creature of God's locked in our kitchen. Yes, we know it's for its own good, but I want it to be outside, flying freely. Friends, I believe that the Spirit wants us to be outside of whatever encases us in this moment, and there is a long list of things. I believe that God wants us to be outside outside of ourselves long enough to know of all the winged creatures and all of us trying to make it, to believe in the shalom that comes when we step outside of ourselves. I wanna share a little bit of a story that happened just yesterday as we went to a Christmas tree farm in Pennsylvania. Now you might say, it's a little early to be putting up your tree, Pastor Claire, and I would agree. This is about the earliest threshold that we allow in our own sense of being at my house. But I, alongside so many, and perhaps you, need the trimmings of Christmas in a different way this year. There's a sense in which if we get out the ornaments that start to conjure that familiar feeling of Christmas, if we start to listen to the Christmas music, if we start to even watch the cheesy movies that somehow will be making more room for Christmas this year. And it'll help us to forget if even just for a moment, this pandemic that we are squarely in. And so we put up the trees. For us, it was going out to a farm for the first time together when Adam had, with his saw and we found the spot and we went up the hill where there were dozens and dozens of trees calling out to us. And it seemed like everyone was the one that my daughter might want till we arrived at really the one. It was beautiful. We even, you know, all bent down and got a picture. And then we did a selfie where you can see part of the picture of the, the tree behind us. And just as Adam was going to get the saw, and to start cutting it down. We saw a ribbon on it. And we weren't sure what the ribbon meant and we saw that it might be a name on there. And so he said, hold up. And Adam said, but we got here, our claim, right? We're here. They didn't say anything to us about ribbons, but thinking better of it, it was a long hike down to the booth, but I called up on the phone and I said, say we found a tree up on on the hill here and it's got a ribbon on it. What does that mean? And they said, oh, that means that it has been reserved. <laughs> and that means that that tree is going to be cut down by someone else later. Thank you so much for calling. If you had sawed that tree down, I would have been in big trouble. Friends, there were many other trees. We abandoned this one before long and found something else. But this little vignette seems to capture a lot of where we might be in this season. 
we think we've alighted on just the right thing or just the right one to help us move into the Christmas spirit. When we find again and again, even here at the holiday of Thanksgiving that we've had, that we need to bend what we want and our desires, even the best thing that we have in our sights, perhaps that traditional family meal. And we have to pivot even at the last minute in order to bend to the needs of others, sometimes those we don't even see. Here was this tree with its ribbon, and it wasn't meant for us, but it was meant for somebody. In this last week, and perhaps also in the weeks to come, we have felt the weight of wanting to do the best for our families and friends and community. We want the traditional holiday, but as the COVID cases particularly have spiked in our area, we have faced the fact that we have to put down the saw, unbook the ticket, disinvite each other, and sit outside in the cold. And do all this truly because there is a pink ribbon on the tree marking it for our neighbor's health and needs. We wanna feel like the sacrifice of the past many months has been towards something even unseen. And so we look out and we want to see that moment that will arrive later that will show us that it is all worth it, whether it's a date in January or the moment when a vaccine becomes widely available, when we don't have to be quite so cautious around each other and we can draw near to each other's company. And in so doing, even in these moments, we find out how reliant we are upon one another. It's a pandemic that invites on long path of peace. I was doing my calculations and it's about the nine months plus since we were first in lockdown to our time right now. Can you imagine the gestation of all of our anxiety? Is there anything good that can come of that? I would say yes, as it mixes with our sacrifice and always on our sights, a broader and bigger and more sweeping shalom. One that extends beyond ourselves and the needs we have right in front of us and gives over to the needs of others. In his book, Gratefulness, the Art of Prayer, David, Stindelrast says, no matter how tenaciously our will clings to self-sufficiency, it provides the help we need to get out of that trap. Self-sufficiency is an illusion, and sooner or later, life shatters every illusion. None of us would be what we are if it were not for our parents, teachers, and friends. Even our enemies help make us what we are. There never was a self-made person. Every one of us needs others. Sooner or later, life brings this truth home to us. In pandemic, friends, this truth has been brought home to us. And that we, in this nine months of gestation, are brought to a place of potential birth where the road starts to look a bit familiar as we hear the carols of welcome of this liberating God. How differently our ears may hear it this year when we are outside of our comforts. May we look out and realize that we are outside quite literally as we have been breathing in a fresh air finding new places of gratitude for the simple things and claiming the blessings that we hold in community despite being physically distanced from one another. And here we find the opportunity to continue to draw near to one another in these unsuspecting ways virtually and in so doing to draw near to God this little baby that is coming to be born in Bethlehem teaches us the crude reliance we have on this physical way of being. But with each of this cast of characters that we will be joining, Mary, Joseph, shepherds, wise persons, 
They bend their wills to the vision of the baby. They bend low to his story. And in his lifetime, we find that he, again and again, will put the needs of others before his own physical comfort. The ministry of Jesus. And in scripture today, while the authors of Psalm 85 are looking out, imagining a better vision of their current reality, a time when they will perceive that God has stopped being angry, that there will be a favor return, restoration to the land, and we might add the end of pandemic. But alongside them, we recognize that something is required of them, of us, in creating a vision of shalom completeness. As we find in the scripture, God will speak shalom to those who travel to God in their hearts. We bow to the needs of others, and it takes the weeks of Advent to become accustomed to that posture in our spirits. Our bodies move lowly so that we do not miss the birth. In this time, we have been distanced from one another only to rediscover how much we all need one another, working together to make sure that righteousness in the scripture can kiss. I want to share that there is a tree that has been planted in our sacred garden. Nothing has been uprooted and nothing has been directly put in the ground, but a tree has taken on a new identity over the weekend. It starts here at Advent and we see it going on into perpetuity. It's a tree of gratitude. It's the tree that has been dedicated to former enabling minister Jerry Gothi. And right now it has not one single leaf on it. And yet there are tags down at its roots with an invitation for people who are coming to take a pen and to write where they are in their own spirits and out of a desire for their own shalom to speak the gratitude of what it means even as we are outside the breaths that we take and the preparation that God has on our hearts for the time to come. We know so many from our neighborhood frequent our sacred garden. It's like we know they are near, but sometimes feel so distant from who these persons are. And yet this tree is invitational, not only as our KC tree and that which we claim to just welcome others would offer, but this tree that is dedicated for the broader community and the broader vision of shalom. That as each tag would be added on this tree, that our gratitude as a people would grow and that we would all be traveling together to the heart of God. I invite you throughout the Advent season to visit this tree and to think what it is that you would write on your own tag and on your own ribbon that would be on the tree. And instead of a tag that reserves it and sections it off for one person or family, the many tags of our outpouring in love help us to remind us that we are dedicated as gods. That perhaps the tree will provide a sense of hope as it did for Carol Williams out in Spokane, Washington. Carol is my mom's best friend and has been attending through a virtual opportunity at different points in our seasons together. She was in the Brian McLaren class, the great spiritual migration, and she was in a Zoom breakout room with Elaine Booterer. And that's when this plan was hatched because Carol had done something similar in her yard. And she saw the way that the young kids in the neighborhood and people from all over Spokane had come and written their words until there were hundreds of tags, hundreds of reminders of the ways in which we are interconnected and the ways despite our own imprisoned places, feeling isolated and alone, the actions that we take out of safety 
and the actions that we take in connection are part of a larger of God's peace. And so whether you come and offer your tag soon, whether you choose to be an Advent friend, praying mysteriously alongside someone in this community for the next four weeks, whatever it is, may you breathe in the outside quality of what it looks like when we can't be all in the barn. And yet we are all in learning alongside the spirit, what will be birthed through this season, through the coming of the Christ child and beyond to a date that we cannot yet see. But each day that draws us closer to whatever date and whatever manifestation of Shalom that is coming, we better recognize who are, we are called to be. A people of peace. A people of Shalom. Before we would move into a time of community response, we have a very brief video from a Episcopal priest. She comes and shares with us the vision of what Shalom would look like in her own view. She's the Dean of the Episcopal Divinity School at Union Theological Seminary and the Canon Theologian at the Washington National Cathedral. In bringing in her voice, we are reminded that we are part of a larger church, that we are indeed ecumenical in nature, and that as we go forward, it will require our partnerships with additional communities, that it will take having an enlarged view of what God is doing in the world, and it will take our, each of us traveling nearer and nearer together to the heart of God. Hear now from Kelly Delane Brown Douglas. <laughs> 